in uh, McKinsey's work today, how did you, what, what kind of time did he do? What, what was your impressions of what he did? Yeah, he left the half mile, four and a half, and he, I got him in 48 and three, I think, out in a minute one out in like 14 and I slowed him up but um, no, it was nice it was nice smooth uh, got in a nice rhythm and uh, just enough just I just wanted to give him something like I he's had two pretty stiff work so mm -hmm. it was just perfect handle it well so uh, you know he should come out running you've got such a you know great record in this race but just sort of talk about the idea of uh, what attributes with him when you're thinking about this classic in this field? You... Well, I mean, he's a good horse, and it's a tough race. And uh, but you know, it, he needs to get away from the gate and uh, and get into the race early. And that's the way he wants to run. And he gets stronger as he goes. And so, um, so it's um, you know, but he's got to show up that day. They all it's, it's all about showing up. You know, you, you I've seen great fields put together, but a lot of horses don't show up. So it's who shows up is going to get the big prize. People, they're wondering about the mile and a quarter with him. In your mind, no question about the mile, handling the mile and a quarter. He did get beat a nose at a mile and a quarter before. Okay. That's a horrible getting beat a nose at a mile and a quarter. No, I mean, he got beat by a really nice horse. And, um, you know, there's, there's this horse is uh, he's a, I, he's a little tricky horse to ride, you know. And so, um, but I know how... He's got to be ridden, and so we'll, we'll see what happens. So what does Joel Rosario bring to that because of his riding style? He's, a, I think, his reputation is a good, strong I, you finisher. Know what? He's, this... uh, uh, you, you know, this, there's a lot about this horse, and I'm going to sit down with Joel, but he's, he's ridden against him, he's beaten him, and he knows him. They, these guys, they, they're so good. They, they see the videos. They, they know the horses. And mm -hmm. He's run against them, so it's... Can you just talk about this horse's name for a good friend of yours and also the owner is Brad McKenzie, and... The idea of you could win, you know, to win a race like this. He's won really nice races, but to win the Breeders' Cup Classic. Well, I mean, every time he gets beat, it's very frustrating because I think of Brad, you know. It was very frustrating to lose him at mile. Um, he was just so good that day. But I really don't blame Mike too much. He was, you know, he had to make a decision there and just, he made the wrong one, you know. And so, uh, but, um, you know, those, those races are so important for these horses. But, you know, we, we want to win every race you know what he runs first or second he's right there and uh it's just one of those things where i just want to you know I, I like the for the ownership group mike pegram carl watson paul whiteman i want to win it for them you know they've been in the you know they've they've had some good luck but they've had some tough luck looking at lucky drawing the one in the derby that was a chance you know to win a derby and but uh you know i just want the horse to show up my my job if he shows up if he gets out run he gets out run but you know what I want the horse to get beat with his style, and you know, not. Um, and then that's what it's, what it's all about. You know, there's, there's a lot on the line. There's championships on the line. There's horse of the year on the line. Um, there's a lot on the line there. So this is that's the beauty about the Breeders' Cup. You know, there's a lot of they're going to give out a lot of championships the, uh, this weekend, and so uh, I just hope you know some of mine are on that list. You on the theme with McKinsey. You were emotional after he won the Whitney. I've seen the video of it a few times. Uh, you know, you were your friend's horse won a big race that you hadn't ever won before. You that, that moved yeah, you. Yeah, it does. Cause you know, a lot of people don't think I'm, I have a heart, but I do. I'm and I'm, I'm a I'm a softy, and Brad was the biggest softy of all. I mean, I remember when I won my when I won my first uh, uh, Kentucky Derby. Um, I was up in the podium, and I looked down. And I see Brad, and he's in tears. He's just crying, and because we've known him forever, and and that's the kind of guy he was. He was just uh, my number one fan. He, um, so he, you know, he'd show up for all the Triple Crown races, and he was there, and just, uh, and but you know, when he got sick that last year, it was just it was tough watching him go through what he went through, and the things he sacrificed in life to take care of his, of his family, you know, uh, and you know, he made a lot of, and he would never complain. And then, you know, every time until the last day, I said, I always say, Brad, how you feeling? Great. You know, that's, that was him. You know, he didn't want anybody to feel sorry for him. He was tough. I wish I could be that tough. And um, so to me, I think we're all living through this horse, thinking about Brad. He's got a lot of friends. 
And so you'd be surprised of the, the, the inner circle that he had of, of people, you know, there's a lot of, I feel a little extra pressure mm. on me uh, when this horse runs, because I know it's, um, we're all thinking about him. And, and I'm just glad it was, uh, we and named a really good horse after him because it would have been horrible if I would have had to geld this horse, you know? So, um, but, uh, and, and Brad, he was probably one of the funniest guys. Uh, I, you know, I've ever been around and we just loved them. We still tell stories when my family, my brothers get together. Uh, there was no more buddy fun to be with when you went to a football game or anything because he was just hysterical. And a, but a great, a great human being and um, he's still very missed. And so, you know, like I said, he had a lot of friends. Beyond being a great human being, can you talk about what he contributed to horse racing? He was the one that got the thoroughbred meat going at La Salle in the wake of Hollywood Park's um, demise. That what he did for thoroughbred racing in yeah, this. Yeah, but he st really stepped up. Los Alamitos got Doc Allred. Doc Allred always had a soft spot, soft spot for Brad, and he got him in there. And he said, you know, he let Brad do it. He they made the he he was a savior of thoroughbred racing. I could tell the minute he left, I could tell a big change, you know, it, you know, it's not the same when you go down there. So, um, but you know, Brad, we really miss him. I mean, he really was so good. And, and the thing is about it, he always, he, he would, he would bend, you know, a lot of guys, they're in there, they don't bend. He would bend and he knew he wanted everybody to be happy. And he loved, he was for the horsemen, for the trainers, the owners. He wanted everybody to be happy. And it's very rare we get that those kind of people anymore you know usually people are they just they want to just they're just worried about holding on to their job he was not that kind of guy you know he, he, he did what was right which is very rare now these guys they have to justify their jobs he wasn't that kind of guy he, he wanted to make sure that everybody the horsemen you know the jockeys the owners everybody was taken care of and uh, so that was a very rare talent that he had and he got along with everybody grooming on the side and going to school and I met him through this John Bassett and uh, and then he uh, so we needed a place we let him stay with us and uh, we got to know him and my brothers were just it was like my mother called him her fifth son I mean that's how close and all my kids they all called him Uncle Brad they didn't know him as anything other than Uncle Brad and uh, so it was it was really tough I mean it was just tough watching him go out at the end there it was I still think about it and uh, but you know what he just I could never be that tough he was just so tough and uh, but he was just just a good you know I mean you won't hear anybody saying anything bad about Brad McKenzie everybody really enjoyed him um, they loved him and uh, you gonna be able to hold it together if this horse wins on Saturday Oh, I don't care. I'm, he's, you know, his, his mother, unfortunately, she's not, she's not going to make it, but she'll be here. She's going to come see the horse Wednesday. And that's the thing is, his mother, she was telling me that this horse keeps her, gives her a reason to live. She's 93, I think she is now. And, and she's so excited about it. And so, you know, we're all excited about it.